rate of change of a line can be seen in a table. The rate of change of a line can be seen in a calculation. And the rate of change of a line can also be seen in a graph. With the windshield problem, we see that the table, the calculation, and the graph all show how the windshield changes as the air temperature changes. Let's look at the relationship between the rate of change and the steepness of the lines. The rate of change is the coefficient of the x in each equation. We see the larger rates of change make the lines steeper. This lesson is all about using the rate of change to measure steepness. When we work with lines, we have a special word for rate of change, slope. Slope describes the steepness of a line. It's the line's rate of change. People use it for all sorts of reasons, like measuring the steepness of their property to help plan for proper drainage. It's important to read lines from left to right. Lines with a positive slope slant up. Let's find all the lines with positive slopes. These other lines all slant down from left to right, so they have negative slopes. There are two special cases. Flat lines have a slope of zero. Flat lines are called horizontal lines. Perfectly steep lines have an undefined slope. We say it's undefined because we don't have a number to describe perfect steepness. To measure steepness, we can draw a slope triangle that connects two points on a line. Here's a hill with a positive slope. A slope triangle helps us visualize slope by showing the vertical change and the horizontal change between two points. The slope of this hill is 50 over 200 because the vertical change is 50 and the horizontal change is 200. We simplify by dividing the top and bottom by 50 and we get 1 over 4 or 1 fourth the slope tells us that the line only goes up one foot for every four feet it goes to the side. Sometimes with real hills we use percents, so we could say this hill has a grade or a slope of 25%. Here's a hill with a negative slope. The slope is negative 20 over 60, because from left to right we go down 20, over 60. We can simplify by dividing by 20, which gives us negative one-third. Notice when there's a negative sign in front of the slope, it only makes one of the numbers negative. In this case, we go down one over three. This tells us that the line goes down one foot for every three feet it goes to the side. When we need to find the slope of a graph, we start by choosing any two points. I'm going to slide along the line and look for two easy points. Here's one at 4, 3. And here's another one at 10, 7. Now it's time for a slope triangle. Going from left to right, we need to go up 4 and over 6. So the slope is 4 over 6. After simplifying, we get two-thirds. Let's find the slope using a different point. We'll use the same starting point, 
but this time we'll slide up and stop at 7.5. Now our slope triangle is smaller. The change in y is 2, and the change in x is 3. Using this smaller slope triangle, we still get the same slope, two-thirds. In fact, the slope between any two points on a line will always be the same, because lines have a constant rate of change. Here's an example for you to try. Find the slope of the line. This line slants down, so its slope is negative. To find the slope, pick two points. Here's a good point at 2, 6. And here's another good point at 4, 2. We make a slope triangle. And going from left to right, we see that we need to go down 4. That's a negative 4. And over 2. After dividing, we get a slope of negative 2. That means for every 2 units down, we go 1 unit over. Here's another one for you to try. In these examples, it made sense to just use the graph to find the slope. Notice, though, that if we needed to, we could have figured out the vertical rise by subtracting the y's. Three minus six equals negative three. For this reason, the vertical rise is also called the change in y. It also works for the x's. Four minus three equals one. So the horizontal run is also called the change in x. Which brings us to the slope formula. It looks a bit mysterious with all the ones and twos, but it really just says to find the change in y and the change in x by subtracting the coordinates. It's customary to abbreviate slope with the letter M. We read the formula like this. The second y minus the first y divided by the second x minus the first x. Let's try an example. Use the slope formula to calculate the slope between 2, 4 and 5, 10. It's always a good idea to start by labeling your pieces. The second y is 10, and the first y is 4. The second x is 5, and the first x is 2. Now we just substitute them into the formula. The second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. We simplify to get 6 over 3, and 6 divided by 3 equals 2. So the slope of the line between those two points is 2. For every two units up, the line goes one unit over. Here's something interesting. Check out what happens if we switch the points and subtract the other way. we still get two. Here's one for you to try. Be careful with the negatives.
In this lesson, we formalized our understanding of the rate of change by finding the slopes of lines using graphs and the slope formula.